So, I've decided it's time to get this thing set up so I can cut these threads. So I've got my uh, nice little tooling adapter and I've got a piece of high speed steel in here, ground to 60 degrees. I was having a problem before using this fishtail to line it up because of the fact that I had that small area in there that I couldn't get it in there. But I figured out uh, easy way to do that was I just took a small spacer block that was about the width of that area there that I'm going to thread, held the spacer block up against that, and then held this fishtail up against the spacer block, and then use that to get my alignment. First, uh, at first, I just took the holder off altogether, and I just took this whole face right here, and I brought it right up against flush to the, uh, to the side of the quill here on the tailstock, which would put this side at exactly 90 degrees, or exactly perpendicular to the uh, axis, the turning axis. The problem is when I did that, I could visibly see that the uh, point of the threading tool didn't look like it was aligned correctly. And I think that's because the way that whoever ground it, the way that they ground it, and then also probably a little bit of error here and there kind of amplified through the whole system, but mostly the way it's ground. So... Um, what I did was I put my little spacer block in there, brought my fishtail in, and I brought the point right into the, uh, groove here with the, um, tool post loose, aligned it, and then tightened it down, and now my alignment's good that way. So now, what I'm right in the middle of doing is working on setting the height of the tool. And what I've got is I've got a narrow scale that I've got pinched in between the point of the tool and the uh, the piece that I'm going to be cutting threads onto. So if we look at it from the end, the tailstock end looking down, we can see how far out this scale is tilted and that will give us an indication of how far up or down we have to bring the tool. Alright, so that's tilted way back. So that means that the uh, cutter has to go down. Ooh, that don't look too bad. Oh, I like it. Looks good. All right, we want 11 threads per inch. So let's see, over here in the Mighty Vernon's chart, 11 threads per inch is over here. This up here. Number two. That should do it. Next, I want this thing going as slow as it can go. the breaker well I can't wait till I get everything rewired so that I have a dedicated 220 volt outlet to run this lathe off of right now I'm running it off of a 120 volt branch circuit which is also the shop lights so when I trip the breaker I get plunged into darkness well all right so I get tired of messing around every time with this thing so I finally took out my tachometer and I actually did some tests and I Found out my RPMs of my spindle on my lathe. My lowest speed, not in back gear, is 215 RPM. And then I have 320, um, 420, and then 620. Now, 620 RPM doesn't sound very fast, especially with the carbide inserts that I use. But the problem is that this is an old lathe, and it's got these old um, uh, like bronze phosphorus bearings or whatever the heck they're made out of. And, uh, you know, they're drip oiled, so you don't want to push them too hard. So that's, you know, it is what it is. So now I shifted it into back gear. So I've got it at the absolute lowest speed I can set this lathe to, which my tachometer is telling me it's somewhere under 30 RPM. So that's plenty slow enough. 
even a noob like me should be able to uh, not lose control of things. Then it occurred to me, I went through all this trouble of setting up the cutting tip to the, uh, to the stock that I'm going to be threading and totally forgot to check my compound. I had just assumed wrongly, and I'm glad I checked it, that I hadn't messed with my compound since the last time I did any threading on this lathe. And lo and behold, it's actually over 30 degrees, which is not good. Um... You know, there's, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of debate on what's the ultimate uh, or the optimum angle. Um, I think in one of Henry Ford's early books, he talks about that the, uh, the angle for threading should be set at 30, which makes sense because 30 is exactly half of the included angle of the thread. So we've got 60 degree threads, half of that is 30 degrees. A lot of guys run at 29 or 29 and a half degrees. And the reason why they do that is to give the side of the high speed steel cutter um, that tiny bit of clearance to help with the cut as you're getting deeper into the groove of the thread. So that's why you hear a lot about 29 degrees. Some guys run 29, some run 30, some run 29 and a half. I like 29 and a half because it's kind of a compromise between the 29 and 30 guys, right? So I'm going to set it to 29 and a half, and then I'm going to have to reset my tool to uh, as far as being square to the stock. Almost uh, set to go here. I got one other thing I have to contend with, and that's this free play I have in this cross slide. I'm going to have to at some point take this apart and investigate whether or not there's some shimming I can do to alleviate this. I've been living with it right now by basically keeping in mind that when I put the cutter in, that's going to pull this back. So as long as this tension in the back uh, position here, the cross slide works the way it should. The problem is... If I don't have back tension on and if I back off with the cross slide handle and then I rotate forward, you can see it's starting to move forward and that seems like it's engaged, but I could push it forward that much further. So I have to keep that in mind, and especially with the threading, I'm going to want to keep that in mind. Now, one of the things I can do is... I can lock this clamp on the tapering attachment and that makes that problem pretty much go away. The problem with that is now I can't, I can't use my cross slide. But for threading to advance the cutter, I'm actually using the compound anyways. So I could, I guess I could just bring this right up until it's just touching off and then lock it there and then just use my compound to engage it. The other thing I can do is I can just, I've got a thread stop down here on the carriage right here, and I can just set this to the point where this is just touching off. So, half that's engaged. I need to change direction. I can just see it's just rubbing and making a little ghost line there. So that's where I'm going to set my uh, my thread stop to. This. That should do it. Get some oil. Mess. 
I just saw this whole cutter move. Oh wow, does that look bad. No, you had to get cute, huh, Steve? You had to show everybody. Oh, look at me. I'm a big shot. I can cut threads with a single point cutter on a old lathe. I got the skills. And you don't. Because you muffed it. And you should have just done what you thought of doing in the first place. Which is just using a die holder and doing it. And for some reason I just thought that wouldn't work. And now I've got actually some decent looking threads. Even with the screw up, I think that's still gonna work. Got a little bit of a uh, filing to do. So on the die here, there's a gap right here that allows you to actually keep this looser when you're first cutting the threads and then by turning in these uh, set screws it'll close that up a little bit and it'll actually cause it to cut the uh, thread even deeper than it was. So right now uh, it's still too tight. Pretty close actually. Chase this one more time. The die is tapered. It's, this dimension on this side is larger than the dimension on the other side. So when I come all the way down to this end here, the uh, very last few threads here are going to be a larger diameter. But these first threads here should all be uniform. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna tighten this die down a little bit. That's pretty good up here, and over here it's a little tight, but again, that's because of that tapered die. 
So the reason why I didn't, didn't think to use a die in the first, well, I thought to use a die in the first place, and then I realized, oh, the problem is it's got a taper, and this is such a short area. And what didn't occur to me, uh, and I actually have to thank one of my uh, contributors, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, but somebody left a comment and said, hey, why not just use the die, chase the threads with a die? And I said, uh, you know, well, I thought the problem would be the taper, and he said, well, you just start it this way, and then turn the die around. So you use the small diameter at the start of the threads that you've already got going there and let that cut all the way down to the to the shoulder. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So we're gonna try that. I like that idea. So I loosened the grub screws and now to get the die out of the holder I'm just gonna thread it on to here. See it's not tight now because I loosened up those grub screws goes all the way but let's let's get this over here okay all right so now take the die off and I'm gonna put the small diameter facing out on the holder all right all right so I'm gonna put this on And you can see how sloppy it is. So I'm going to tighten my grub screws a little bit. See, now that's a better fit. I think that should do it. Times like this, I wish I had a modern lathe with a cam lock or something like that type of chuck setup or L1 with a locking ring and reverse if I wire this up so that I have reverse on this lathe I'm gonna hit the damn switch one of these times and the chucks gonna come spinning off good enough for my purposes. Cut a keyway in the tapered area here. 